hello students welcome once again to my youtube channel today we are going to read new lessons from your supplementary english reader an alien hand and the title of the lesson is I want something in a cage lesson number six the lesson is about a person named Mr. Purcell who owns a pet shop there is constant noise of screeching and twittering in the shop but Mr. Purcell is happy and aware of it. The call, one cold morning, a strange customer calls. Let's see. Mr. Purcell did not believe in cost. Nevertheless, the man who brought the two dobs and his strange egg immediately thereafter left him with a distinct sense of the uncanny as though behind his departed customer there had lingered the musty smell of an abandoned haunted house mr purcell was a small fuzzy man red cheeks and a tight melon stomach large glasses magnified his eyes so as to give him the appearance of a wise and genial all. He owned a pet shop, he sold cats and dogs and monkeys, he dealt in fish food and bird seed, prescribed remedies for ailing canaries, and display on his shelves long rows of ornate and gilded cases. He considered himself something of a professional man. A constant stir of movement pervaded his soft, whispered twitters, sly rustling, squeals, chips, and sudden quakes, small feet scampered in frantic circles. Here yeah, the word uncanny meaning unusual, magnified, made to appear big, canary, a small bright yellow bird noted for its singing frightened bewildered blindly seeking across the selves pulse these endless flickers of life but the customers who came in said aren't they cute look at that little cage they are sweet and mr Purcell himself would smile and briskly rub his hands and emphatically shake his head. It's morning when the routine of opening his soft was completed. It was the proprietor's customs to perch on a high stool behind the counter, unfold his morning paper, and digest the day's news. As he read, he would smirk, frown, reflectively perch his lips, knowingly lift his eyebrows not in grave agreement he read everything even advice to the love loan and the detailed columns of advertisements it was a rough day a strong wind blew against the high plaid glass windows smog filled the wintry city and the here, perch meaning sit, digest, read, and understand fully. Okay. Air was grey with a thick frost. Having completed his usual tasks, Mr. Purcell again mounted the high stool and unfolded his morning paper. He adjusted his glasses and glanced at the day's headlines, chirpings and squeaking and mewing vibrated all round him. Yet Mr. Purcell heard it no more than he would have heard the monotonous ticking 
of a familiar clock. There was a bell over the door that jingled whenever a customer entered. This morning, however, for the first time Mr. Purcell could recall, it felt the ring. Simply he glanced up, and there was the stranger standing just inside the door, as if he had materialized out of thin air. The storekeeper slid off his stool. Stool. From the first instant, he knew instinctively and reasonably that the man hated him. But out of the habit, he rubbed his hands briskly together, smiled, and nodded. "Good morning," he beamed. "What can I do for you?" I have some exercises here. Comprehension check. Write true or false against each of the following statements. Mr. Purcell sold birds, cats, dogs, and monkeys. Das, he was very concerned about the well-being of the birds and animals in his shop. Das, he was impressed by the customers who bought the two doves. Das, he was a successful shop owner, though insensitive and cold as a person. Das, why is Mr. Purcell compared to an owl? From the third paragraph, pick out. Words associated with cries of birds, words associated with noise, words suggestive of confusion and fear. Exercise number four. Mr. Purcell heard it no more than he would have heard the monotonous tickings of a familiar clock. Read para beginning with it was a rough day. What does it refer to? Why does Mr. Purcell not hear it clearly? Okay, let's continue reading. The lesson: The customer wants something that has wings. He spends his ten years earning on a pair of birds. What he does after buying the birds is the strangest act Mr. Purcell has ever seen. Okay, let's find it out. The man's shiny shoes squeak forward. His suit was cheaped, ill-fitting, but obviously new. He had a shuttling glance and close-cropped hair. Ignoring Purcell for the moment, he rolled his gaze around the shadowy shop. A nasty morning volunteered the shopkeeper. He clasped both hands across his melon-like stomach. And smile importantly. I see by the paper we are in for a cold spell. Now, what was it you wanted? The man stared closely at Mr. Purcell as though just now aware of his presence. He said, "I want something in a cage." Something in a cage. Mr. Purcell was a bit confused. You mean some sort of bed? I mean what I said. Snapped the man. Something in the cage. Something that is small. I see. Hasn't the storekeeper not at all certain that he did? His eyes narrowed gravely, and he pursed his lips. Now let me think. A white rat, perhaps. I have some very nice white rats. No, said the man. Not rats. Something with wings. Something that flies. A bird! exclaimed Mr. Purcell. Shuttling glance, constantly looking to and fro. Snapped, said angrily. Let's continue reading. A bird's all right. The customer pointed suddenly to a suspended cage which contained two snowy birds, doves. How much for those? Fifty-fifty came the prompt answer. At a very reasonable price, they are a fine pair. Fifty-fifty. The man was obviously crestfallen. He hesitantly produced a five-dollar bill. I would like to have these birds, but this is all I have got. Just five dollars. Mentally, Mr. Purcell made a quick calculation, which told him that at a fifty-cent reduction, he could still reap a tidy profit. He smiled magnanimously. 
my dear man, if you want them that badly, you can certainly have them for five dollars. I will take them. He laid his five dollars on the counter. Mr. Purcell tottered on tiptoe, unhooked the cage, and handed it to his customer. The man cocked his hat to one side, listening to the constant tittering, the rushing scurry of the soft. That noise, he blurted, doesn't it get you? Noise? What noise? Mr. Purcell looked surprised. He could hear nothing unusual. The customer glared. I mean, all this cage stuffed drives you crazy, doesn't it? Mr. Purcell drew back. Either the man was insane or drunk. He said hastily, "Yes, yes. Certainly, I guess so." Listened. The staring eyes came closer. How long did you think it took me to make the five dollars? The merchant wanted to order him out of the shop. But oddly enough, he couldn't. He heard himself dutifully asking, "Why? Why? How long did it take you?" The other laughed. Ten years at half lever. Ten years to earn five dollars, fifty cents a year. It was best. Purcell decided to humor him. My my, ten years. That's certainly a long time now. It's snowy, meaning white. Crestfallen, disappointed, magnanimously, generously, he smiled a broad smile. Tottered, moved unsteadily. They give you five dollars, laugh the man, and a cheap suit, and tell you not to get caught again. Mister Purcell mopped his sweating brow. Now about the care and feeding of your dove, I would advise. Bah. The man swung round and stalked abruptly from the store. Purcell sighed with sudden relief. He waddled to the window and stared out. Just outside, his peculiar customer had halted. He was holding the cage shoulder high, staring at his purchase. Then, opening the cage, he reached inside and drew out one of the doves. He tossed it into the air. He drew out the second and tossed it after the first. They rose like wind-blown balls of fluff, and were lost in the smoky grey of the wintry city. For an instant, the liveratus, silent and lifted gaze, watched after them. Then he dropped the cage. His soft, bold hands dipped in his. Moved, meaning here wiped. Trouser pocket, hunched down his head, and shuffled away. The merchant's brow was puckered with perplexity, perplexity, so desperately. Had the man desired the dubs that he had let him have them at a reduced price, and immediately he had turned them loose. Now why, Mister Purcell muttered. Did he do that? He felt vaguely insulted. L. E. grieved. Again, comprehension check. Do you think the atmosphere of Mr. Purcell's shop was cheerful or depressing? Give reasons for your answer. Describe the stranger who came to the pet shop. What did he want? Three Roman born. The man insisted on buying the doves because he was fond of birds. Do you agree? How had he earned the five dollars he had? Was the customer interested in the care and feeding of the doves he had bought? If not, why not? Exercises. Discuss the following topics in groups. One. Why, in your opinion, did the man set the doves free? Two. Why did It made Mr. Purcell feel vaguely insulted. Okay. L. E. Grief has beautifully written this story. Okay. This person, Mr. Purcell, is one very interesting character. But that stranger is even more. Interesting.
it was obvious for Mr. Purcell to have such attitude as a professional man, as a soft honor, or a bad soft. But that stranger carries that uncertain atmosphere or attitude. You see, Mr. Purcell had a bad shop. He was a small man. He had red cheeks and a tight melon stomach. He wore large glasses. His eyes looked big through them. He had the appearance of a wise and jovial owl. Mr. Purcell sold cats, dogs, monkeys, birds and all. Okay. He sold fish food and bird seeds as well. He gave advice for sick animals and he suggested remedies for them as well. He displayed beautiful gases in his soft. There, there were rows of gadgets on his shelves. He thought that he was a professional man. The soft had less light. It was a bit dark inside and it was full of noises. One could hear tweeters, rustling, squeals, chips, squeaks. Small birds can see, run in circles in fear. Thus there was life in his soft. But it smelled of confined flesh. See, a horrible smell. Anyhow, the customers were always happy. They came and praised the birds. They called them sweet and cute. Mr. Purcell was very happy to see such customers. He often smiled and nodded his head when people praised the birds. Mr. Purcell had a fixed routine. He opened his soft. He fixed everything at each place. Then he sat on a stool and began to read the morning paper. He would enjoy every item of news. He would digest the news. He did not leave even the advertisement columns. One day, Mr. Purcell was sitting at his shop. The day was cold and a strong wind was blowing. It was perhaps one of the winter days. A thin sheet of smoke covered the whole sky. Mr. Purcell came to his shop. He completed his usual tax. He sat on the stool and began to read the newspapers. The noise in the soft did not disturb him as it was as familiar to him as the ticking of a clock. But he often heard the bell. The bell rang at the coming of the customers. A strange thing happened that morning. He did not hear the bell. However, he saw a man standing inside the door. He rubbed his hands out of habit. He smiled and nodded too. The man was pale faced. He was wearing new but loose clothes. He did not look at Mr. Purcell but he looked all around the soft. Mr. Purcell was upset. He didn't know what to say. Anyhow, he exchanged greetings with a smile. He asked his customers what he wanted. The customer replied, I want something in a cage. The shopkeeper wanted clarification, but the customer snubbed him and said, I mean what I said. I do not want rats. I want something with wings. I want something that flies. Mr. Purcell knew what the customer wanted. He showed him a pair of fine dobs. He demanded $5.50 as a price. The stranger had just five dollars with him. He told the shopkeeper that it was all that he had. This was his total earnings in ten years. He was in prison. The prison was like a cage for him. He was given a five dollar bill at the end of his term. The shopkeeper knew that he was earning a good profit even at that price. So he gave the pair to the customer obliging him for five dollars. 
Mr. Burchell wanted to say something more, but the stranger was not interested. He went out with the cage. Mr. Burchell thought that the man was mad. He went to the window. When he looked out, he saw a strange sight. His customer stood outside his shop. He opened the cage, caught one dove, and let it fly in the air. He set the other dove free too. Then he dropped the cage and went away. He knew the value of freedom. The shopkeeper was puzzled. He catched birds and earned money out of their cell. But here was a man who gave all his money, hard-earned money, for their freedom. He felt vaguely insulted. Now let's have a look again at the exercises. Comprehension check. True or false? Mr. Puzzle sold birds, cats, dogs, and monkeys. This statement, Roman number one, is true. He was very concerned about the well being of the birds and animals in his soft. False. He was impressed by the customer who bought the two dumps. Either you can say true or you can say false also because the reason is after all the stranger, the customer who bought the two dumps and his ache of letting the two dogs fly away make Mr. Person feel vaguely insulted. So, false. He was a successful shop owner, though insensitive and cold as a person. True. Why is Mr. Person compared to an owl? Mr. Person wore large glasses. His eyes look very big through those glasses. That is why he has been compared to an owl, a jovial owl. From the third paragraph, pick out words associated with cries of birds, twitters, rustling, squeals, chips. These are the words you will find in the third paragraph. See, words associated with noise, squeals, and squeaks. Roman number three, words suggestive of confusion and fear. Frantic, frightened, bewildered. Check it out. Next question. Mr. Personal heard it no more than he would have heard the monotonous ticking of a familiar clock. Red para beginning with it was a rough day. Okay. What does it refer to? Why does Mr. Purcell not hear it clearly? You see, it refers to the noise of the birds and animals. And Mr. Purcell does not hear it clearly because he is used to hearing this noise. And let's have a check. The comprehension check 2. Page 42. Do you think the atmosphere of Mr. Purcell's shop was cheerful or depressing? Give reasons for your answer. The atmosphere of Mr. Purcell's shop was depressing. It gave out musty smell of an abandoned, haunted house. The frantic noises of birds and animals made one restless. Describe the stranger who came to the pet shop. What did he want? The stranger was pale faced and had pinched features. 
He wore a new but chipped and ill-fitted suit, loose suit, and his shoes shone brightly. He was a lover of freedom. He wanted to buy caged birds to free them. He gave all his money to free a pair of doves. The man insisted on buying the doves because he was fond of birds. Do you agree? I don't think so. So I said, no, I don't agree with this statement. The man was not fond of birds. He was fond of freedom. He himself had been in prison for 10 years. He knew the agony of captivity. He wanted to buy the caged birds to set them free. How had he earned the five dollars he had? The stranger was in jail for ten years. He did hard labor there. He was given fifty cents every year. He got five dollars at the end of his term. Thus he earned five dollars after hard labor of ten years. Was the customer interested in the care and feeding of the dubs he had bought? If not, why not? No. The answer is no. The customer was not interested in the care and feeding of the doves he had bought. He was interested only in their freedom. He had been in a jail for 10 years, so he craved for freedom. He wanted to set the birds free as he realized the true value of freedom when he was in, in imprisonment for 10 years. Why, in your opinion, did the man set the dubs free? See, the man himself had been in prison for 10 years. He knew the pain of captivity. He set the dubs free because he knew the real value of freedom. Why did it make Mr. Purcell feel vaguely insulted? Mr. Purcell felt vaguely insulted to see the man pay for the freedom of the birds while he earned money by keeping birds and other animals caged.